and take an after picture of yourself and list all the things that God did in your life over the fast. Think about your life right now. You know, are you at peace with yourself? You know, are you fearful? Are you discouraged? Do you have addictions? Or, you know, is there some kind of bad habit that you just can't seem to break? Are there things that it just seems like, you know, you, you had hopes, you had dreams, and you, you, you have these things, but because it just never seems like you can get a breakthrough, you know, you've kind of given up on those hopes and dreams. I want to tell you, it's time to dream again. It's time to hope again. Have you lost your, your passion for God, your momentum, that faith, that zeal? Listen, this is all just your before picture. Day 22, I can't wait for you to see the after picture because God is going to bring a breakthrough. He's going to do the miraculous. He's going to do some amazing things in your life if you'll go on this journey with him. You know, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like, you know, you get, when you get married and, you know, you go on the honeymoon and, you know, you're, you're so in love and you're passionate. And then, then you know, as, as life kind of throws stuff at you and you, you go through challenges in your marriage, it, it's so easy. You know, you, you're, you're still committed to your spouse. But it's easy to lose that passion. So what do you do on your anniversary? You set times to get away. And what those trips are for, it's to rekindle that passion. Well, that's kind of what awakening is. It's about rekindling our passion for God. See, we want to obey God, right? But, but, but obedience without passion is duty. And it's fine. Let's Look, we'll obey God out of duty. Obey God when you don't feel like it. Absolutely, that's a sign of maturity. We're not led by our feelings, but I also want to say this, that duty-based obedience is not where God wants you to live. There are seasons where that's just what it is, but God wants you to have a passion-based obedience where you, you, your love for him is rekindled. You know, we see people set free from so many things. Uh, you know, we've, we've had people, uh, you know, on drugs. I mean, we have seen people, I'm talking delivered from drugs and alcohol, I mean, all kind of stuff. I mean, I remember this guy told me one awakening fast. He came down, he's like, Pastor, I'm excited, I'm in, man. 21 days, no pot. I was like, all right, anything else? He's like, no, man, I'm just giving up pot. Believe me, that's bad enough. Let me just start there. <laughs> I remember that same guy in the last week of the fast came up to me in tears, talking about after one of our prayer nights how God, he just felt like God's presence is set him free. He surrendered his life to Christ. That guy's serving in our church right now, totally set free and on fire for God. We've seen people get set free from, from, you know, cocaine, ecstasy, pills, Oxycontin, all those kind of things. I mean, some of these things are like, you know, if you understand the drug culture, like these are, these are hardcore drugs. I'm talking totally delivered. Yes, they need to get in a program and get accountable and all that after that and get the right relationship. See, we're, I want you to remember that this fast, it's, it's not a project. It's, it's engaging the process of the work of God in your life that he wants to do for 2013. But there is in the process seasons where God wants to give you a breakthrough, where he wants to give you freedom, where he wants to kind of wipe the slate clean and fill you up and pull you out of the pit, get you back on your feet again, get your joy back. set you free. I mean, we've even had people delivered from what I consider the most of those serious drugs, and that is Haagen-Dazs vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I mean, that is a vice. It always comes back to haunt me, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I keep circling around that mountain, that vanilla ice cream, but come on, God's going to set me free <laughs> over these 21 days. So let me just unpack this a little bit right, right here in chapter 10. Okay, so here's what we're going to do for these 21 days. Real simple, ready? Verse 2, verse 3, and verse 4, it talks about mourning, which we understand the Hebrew word abal. It means to seek God. It's, it's prayer. So for 21 days, watch this. For 21 days, you're going to pray. 
When you wake up, you just set a time, you're going to pray, you're going to have a time with God. For 21 days, he had no meats, no wines, no rich foods. At the, 21 days, do the fast. Get the book, go to Rick Warren's website, Daniel Plan, fruits, veggies. Some people like to kind of do it stricter, just fruits and veggies. Some people like to do it a little bit more liberal and include like whole grain rices and beans. I mean, there's, you know, whey protein. There's so many supplements that you can get, but do the fast. That's what he did for 21 days. And then the third, thing it says in, uh, the third thing there in verse 4, he has this incredible vision of Jesus. Now, we, we know that what? That this, this incredible vision of the pre-incarnate Christ. Pre-incarnate. And even though Daniel had a vision of the pre-incarnate Christ, I've got good news for you. Listen, you're in the new covenant. You don't need a vision of the pre-incarnate Christ because you've got the resurrected Christ living on the inside of you. But what did he do? The Bible says he looked and he saw Jesus, the Word. He put his eyes on the Word. You've got to put, 21 days, you've got to put your eyes on the Word of God. Read the Bible. Prayer, fasting, Bible reading. Wow. Oh, man, that's some new stuff, huh? Wow, what an incredible, I mean, this is like far out, out on the edge, Christianity, theology, right? Prayer, fasting, and Bible reading for 21 days. Now, let me explain how these, and we've got the Bible reading plan, the Devo, how to have a time with God. You take 10 minutes, we've got everything ready for you. Let me tell you what happens and how this looks when you do this, okay? Why prayer and fasting And Bible reading is such a powerful combination because in fasting, we disconnect from the world, and through prayer and Bible reading, we connect to God. So a lot of times people think, well, isn't prayer and Bible reading enough? Well, for most of the time it is. However, remember when Jesus came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, remember there was the boy, and he had the disease, and he was demon-possessed, and he needed a miracle? And the disciples are like, we can't cast it out. Why can't we cast it out? And Jesus said, this is a faithless and perverse generation. Everybody say faithless. And then everybody say perverse. Remember what I talked about, our world, carnality, the the gunk. Okay, in other words, Jesus was saying this. Here's why you can't see, here's why you, you aren't experiencing this type of miracle, this type of breakthrough, this type of freedom. Because you're faithless, you're not connected enough to God, and you're perverse, you're too connected to the world. So through fasting, we disconnect from the world, we get some of that carnality, that perverseness out. Remember, the carnal mind is enmity with God. It cannot please God. Remember, all sin is carnal, but not all carnality is sin. The Bible says to be spiritually minded is life and peace. It's not that God doesn't want to do a miracle in your life. It's just that your mind has a way just by default in this world of becoming carnally minded. And you you don't have the faith and you can't see it and you can't respond to the word. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So Jesus is saying this kind of miracle, this kind of freedom. That's why right after that he says this kind of change only happens through prayer and fasting. Through prayer, you you guys got to connect back to God and fasting. You got to have a season where you disconnect from the world. That is the power of prayer and fasting. Through prayer and fasting, it's not that we're changing God's mind. Through prayer and fasting, God changes our mind. We're the one with a thinking problem. That's why God says this. He says, look, when you pray, Lord, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as what? As it already is in heaven. So God God already has great miracles, great breakthroughs, great things for your life, your business, your marriage, your kids in heaven. What prayer and fasting does, it just puts us in alignment with what God already wants to do in our lives. The problem isn't that God isn't moving or doesn't want to move in your life. The problem is there's a misalignment. And who do you think is misaligned, us or God? We're misaligned. That's what prayer and fasting does. It connects us to God, 
it disconnects us from the world. And I want to say this, not just, you know, we're talking about food also during the season, disconnect from some other stuff. 